Hello, welcome to the Urban Assembly Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. If your question is for a specific school, make sure you name the school in your question so they know it's for them. If your cameras and microphones are off, the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you registered for this session. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week, again, at the same website where you registered for this session. We are in session B1. You can see that over on the left center part of the screen where I'm moving the mouse and cursor around over. Those are the six schools that will be presenting today, and that is the order of their presentation. So I will step out of the way now and turn it over to our first presentation, the representative from St. Francis College. Ross, thank you so much for having me. Hi guys, how are you? My name is Freddie. I work for the Office of Admissions for St. Francis College. I'm also an alumni of St. Francis College. I graduated there in 2017, and I'm here to talk to you about the institution. St. Francis College believes in creating a learning environment where everyone belongs, so that everyone has the opportunity to dream, serve, and achieve. Dream, dream big, serve, serve the community and one another, and achieve, achieve greatness. Those are some of the focal points of St. Francis College, and we define those through five key differentiating factors. Our personalized approach to education, our affordability, the transformative faculty, our location, and our network. So going through those, the personalized approach to education, St. Francis College is a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. And that's part of the lore that drew me to St. Francis College when I was going through the college admissions process. I wanted to find a small private institution that would give me that one-on-one -on -one individualized approach to education. And that's what I found. Having that environment where people knew my name and were able to help and guide me every step of the way was the environment that drew me. Now, everybody is different. Everybody here has a different learning environment where they feel like they belong. That sense of belonging is the key to finding an education. Obviously, it has to make sense financially. The dollars and cents have to work. You know, it has to be within your wheelhouse of the affordability and other check boxes that you have. But that feeling of belonging, that sense of belonging is something that is very powerful and will allow you to succeed in that college environment. You know, I can speak for myself solely, but I feel that everybody, no matter if it's St. Francis College or elsewise, whatever institution you're able to find and call home, that is how you create an environment where you belong, that aha moment. That personalized approach to education leads into the second differentiating factor, which is our transformative faculty. Having transformative faculty in downtown Brooklyn that know your name and help you work through your four years was something that I found very valuable. All of the faculty members I worked with at St. Francis helped transform me to who I was. They helped me go to law school. I wouldn't have been able to accomplish those things if I didn't have that approach to education. That location that I spoke about before is our third point. Being located in downtown Brooklyn, Brooklyn's our backyard, New York City's our campus. You know, being located in New York City, like most schools, gives you great opportunities, internships, education-wise, this is how we get a lot of our internship opportunities by being located next to most major hospitals while we do our clinicals in Brooklyn, being a couple stops away from Wall Street for some of our finance majors. These opportunities are available because of our location. Leading into that, we have our affordability. St. Francis College is a private school. Again, keep that in mind. We are a non-for-profit private school, but we make a private education affordable by offering merit-based scholarships based off your GPA, and need-based scholarships based off your family's income. So again, you can apply for a merit-based scholarship based off your GPA, we are SAT, ACT optional, and need-based scholarships based off your FAFSA information. So federal and state aid, for those of you that are New York State residents, that is combinable with any need-based scholarships. So a student can apply for merit-based aid, need-based aid, their Pell Grant and their TAP Grant can all be combined to make a college education affordable. 
Not to mention any student with an 85 GPA or above can compete for a full tuition scholarship to attend SFC. That's our presidential scholarship. Any student with an 85 GPA or above and an income of 125,000 or less can also apply for our McGuire scholarship funded by Fred Wilpon. Those scholarship opportunities have to have that income bracket of 125 or less, but still those are two separate scholarship opportunities for you. Not to mention the need-based scholarship and the merit-based scholarship. This is how we make a private school education affordable through those key differentiating factors of affordability. We're also division one. We have 21 division one sport teams. We have 70 majors and minors at St. Francis, almost everything in the sciences, you know, biology, chemistry, nursing, et cetera, those fields. Something we don't have, that all you guys know, is we don't have engineering in any way, shape, or form. And that's okay. Knowing what we have and knowing what we don't have is just as important. But to let you know, we don't have engineering. So yes, Madeline asked, do we have sports? We do. We're division one, 21 teams. We have one more female team than we do male team. How is the nursing program? Another question. Our nursing program is the only program that requires SAT scores. Every other program in St. Francis is SAT, ACT optional, except nursing. Nursing does have SAT waivers for students above a certain GPA. So to apply for nursing, you need at least an 85 GPA or above and a 1,050 SAT score to apply unless you are looking to get an SAT waiver because of COVID, we're allowing SAT waivers this year and we will be offering students with a 90 GPA or better to apply for nursing without SAT scores, they can apply for that waiver. So again, 1,050, 85 GPA for nursing or a 90 GPA or better without SAT scores. What programs do the colleges have in video game development and management? Samuel, good question as well. We have management programs, bachelor's and master's degree. We have business management, healthcare management, digital marketing and media, social innovations and entrepreneurship. Those are the management programs we have. Am I out of time, Russ? You are indeed. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone the order by sharing the uh, slide that shows our session B1 here and uh, the order of the schools presenting. Also, I'll remind you, use the Q&A for any questions you have for any of our presenters. It's ready so ably did there to answer them live, but you can also get an answer typed back to you. Again, if you have a question for a specific school, just make sure you name it in your question. Next up, we will hear from the representative from DCAS. Hey, Dr. Russ, thank you. Is it possible just to share my screen? Of course. Okay. 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 So I'm just going to just uh, going to share just a quick PowerPoint. Um, I'm probably the only representative here that is not uh, affiliated with the school. We are the New York City Department of Administrative Services. Um, we are located in New York City. Uh, our central agency uh, provides effective shared services to support the operation of New York City government as a whole. So what I mean by that is we are committed to the equity, effectiveness, and sustainability that guides the, the work that city agencies work on. For example, we are, we are the oversight for recruiting, hiring, training employees. Uh, we provide facility management for all 55 public buildings. Uh, we acquire, sell, and lease city property. Uh, we purchase more than one billion in supplies and equipment each year, and we are committed to the to to implementing the uh, con the conservation and safety programs throughout the city's facility and vehicle fleets. Um, move this over, okay. Uh, where are we at city at New York City at, at a glance? Who are we? Well, the city is comprised of over eighty plus city agencies, and within those eighty plus city agencies, we have over three hundred thousand city employees. There are over 2,000 subject titles. One of them, I'll joke with you and tell you, we do have a puppeteer, a, a puppeteer title. Uh, we have over 500 programs and uh, initiatives that are for the for citywide. Uh, those who work for the city, you know, we invest in our community. We see the results of the work and, and the effect that it has on others. There's job security and there's opportunities to grow within the uh, city. And there's a work-life balance and great benefits. And that's where we do that each day. 
is a fun fact. We serve over 8.6 million people on a daily basis. So what are some of the benefits that we have for working for the city? Now, the reason why I'm talking to you guys as youth is to guys to give you a little bit of perspective or a little bit of an option of what's out there. Uh, working for the city, there's a, a competitive salary. There's health and awareness programs and discounts. Uh, definitely you work with different teams across the city. I've been working for the city now 24 years and I've worked with a lot of different teams, um, exciting career opportunities. There's free training and room for growth and there's job security and career satisfaction. Um, some of the things when it comes to career paths across the city, and I'm glad that I can talk to you guys about this because at this stage, I'm not sure what you guys have planned for your careers, but this is a little demographic of what I, a little uh, demonstration of what I want to show you. That's you in the middle. Okay. Now, Say you don't have any experience, nor do you have any education. Say you decide on not pursuing anything more with an education. There are positions in the city that don't require either, either in a, a, a you know, work experience or education. There's about 14 different subject titles that encompasses somewhere between 20 to 25,000 of our city employees. Uh, clerical aid, city custodial assistant, city park worker, and school crossing guards. So say you want to venture out and you get your high school diploma or your you know, high school e equivalency. There's over now 25 different subject titles that you can work for with just a high school diploma, dental assistant, clerical associate, engineering, you know, technician, traffic enforcement agent. And say you want to go into college and you enroll in college and you're pursuing some college semester credits. You can work as an internship. You can have a college aid position where you're allowed to work part time during the school year and full time during your school breaks. And of course, if you do graduate from college and, uh, you know, some university, you can definitely now apply for fellowships. Uh, you could definitely apply for entry level titles that require little to no experience. We have some of the titles that are available, civil engineer, intern, staff analyst, trainee, project manager, intern, and of course, child protective specialist. Those are some of the, you know, some of the pathways into working for the city. Um, ways to start your career, of course, you can do the internships and these are applicants that are in high school or in college. Fellowships are usually for applicants um, who have graduated with a bachelor's degree within the last two years of their time of the application, and they can be put in places that are based on their discipline. So if you're studying for public administration, they'll put you somewhere where your discipline could be used, as well as if you're going for computer science or even uh, policy, uh, you know, policy development. Job postings. If you're looking for a job, one of the easiest ways I tell people to do, if you're looking for a job, and if you do have a high school diploma, and you want to look and decide that you want to work, you can definitely go to our jobs board. Now, nyc.gov forward slash jobs is one of our big job boards. That's where all 80 plus agencies put their jobs that they're looking for. And of course, civil service exams, if you want a little bit permanent one, you can go to our DCAS website and you can look for our, you know, our exam schedules that are all, you know, um, that are um, offered monthly, okay? Um, if you are planning to work for the city, if you want to, definitely, I know you guys are probably doing it already, you definitely want to create and update your cover letter and a resume. Uh, we also offer a workshop on career on a cover letter and a resume build. Uh, I would definitely implore you, if you can, to go to the DCAS website, which is nyc.gov forward slash DCAS. You can sign up for our DCAS newsletter that will tell you about the monthly exams that are offered. You can definitely find out about our civil service exams. And of course, take as many exams as you qualify for. You can go to our jobs board where you can definitely explore all the different careers that are available. You want to get familiar with the agencies and the work that they do and of course apply for as many internships and positions for which you qualify and one of the big things i tell people to do is to volunteer that's also good for gained experience um, if you have any questions in regards to working for the city or if you have maybe not now but maybe later on take down our uh, contact information it's uh, citywide recruitment at dcast.nyc.gov you can send it i have a team of four and we basically listen to everybody who has questions that has to do with employment, um, 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 recruitment, exams. So everybody's on this uh, email address and we can always you know, answer your uh, questions. And with that, I think I have about six seconds left before Russ comes on. So I just wanna thank you for allowing us to come out here, a city agency, just to tell you about a different pathway just in case you want to uh, work uh, for the city of New York. Okay, and with that, Russ, I believe I'm done with my presentation. And I want to thank you for allowing us to uh, uh, come out here and speak to you guys. Well, thank you for presenting and uh, also being like dialed in on time. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. So well, uh, Mac, uh, I'll remind everyone, if you have Q&A or question, use the Q&A button. 
and uh, make sure that if it is for a specific institution, name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from SUNY Cortland. Thank you, Russ. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Carmen Wingard. Um, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can begin this portion of the presentation. Okay, so again, Carmen Wingard, I'm a senior advisor here at SUNY Cortland. A um, couple fast facts about uh, Cortland. Um, we're a medium sized school, so a little bit under 7,000 students, which is um, a little bit different than our bigger counterparts at the community college level and at the uh, research center level. But again, Cortland really focuses on that undergraduate experience, that um, bachelor's uh, degree. Um, so we like to keep our, our size relatively small. Um, last year, we brought in about 1,200 freshmen, about 630 transfer students. Sounds like a big number. Um, however, when you look at our total application number of about 15,000, um, I would say that that relatively is a small number. Um, so, so really, you know, our biggest encouragement to students and families is always to uh, apply early just so that you can get um, a very thorough um, review um, in a timely fashion. And then our class sizes are about 23 students per class. Our student to faculty teacher ratio is about 15 to one. So we're keeping a conducive learning environment. Those classes small, um, so no one feels overwhelmed. You always get a, a good relationship and conversation with uh, other faculty members, um, as well as uh, your peers that are within your class. When you're looking at diversity at Cortland, we like to look at it not just from a cultural standpoint, but also geographically. Um, so Cortland is represented. Uh, by every county within a state because of our central location. But then also outside of New York, we've got about 34 different states and 47 different countries here represented on our campus. Um, and I think 45 minutes is conservative, but we're about 45 minutes from Syracuse, Ithaca and Binghamton. Um, so if you were looking for uh, a little bit more bigger urban or metropolitan area, you certainly are a short car ride away from that. We're number one ranked in terms of campus safety within New York, which I know um, may not be uh, the, the best piece of information that you wanted to hear today, but certainly it goes over very well when you bring that information back to your family. So your parents, your counselors, and those who are really caring and concerned about you definitely want to know how Cortland is uh, ranked so high um, within the state for our safety. And we take, take great pride in that as well. Majors. So again, because of time and because of the nature of this presentation, I uh, can't go over everything, but uh, all this information is presented right on our website in terms of all of our programs. We have 68 in total. Um, a couple to highlight, we just incorporated a BFA for our art studio and musical theater program. So students are looking to get that bachelor's in the fine arts can certainly do that through Cortland. Other very popular programs will be criminology, very similar to criminal justice. Um, a little bit more expansive on psychology and the social sciences. Um, an engineering program. Now we don't have engineering at Cortland. However, with the PLUS program, it will give you a degree in physics and math and allow you to transfer to a program, uh, engineering program for two more years to be able to get that degree. Exercise science, which falls in the areas of fitness development, athletic training, physical therapy, um, sport management, always a big one. The first within SUNY, one of the largest, and then teacher certification program. So we're one of the largest teacher certified programs on the East Coast. We offer everything from early childhood ed all the way through adolescent education and pretty much everything in between. Student life and housing. So living on campus um, is a big part of your college experience. Um, over half of our student body does live on campus in one of our 17 different residence halls. We have a number of different kinds of styles. What you'll see here, however, is one of our quads or our suite styles. So there's a couple students on one side, you share a common area. And on the other side, there are a couple more students, which you can all come to con congregate and, and be friendly with each other as you go about. Um, when you come to Cortland, uh, your first two years will be on campus. After that, you can move off campus if you decide to do so. Also insinuating uh, or, or um, expanding on student life, you know, we have over 80 clubs and organizations. You know, we have a peer-to-peer -peer mentor group, which you can see pictured here. I'm actually uh, um, a part of that program where we take upperclassmen and pair them up with underclassmen, um, students of color, and we take you on a retreat for team building and team bonding. It's a great event to let you get acclimated to campus and also the rest of your student peers. We have 25 Division III athletic teams here at Cortland, uh, extremely competitive, usually ranked in the top 20 in the country out of all Division III schools every year. And also close to a thousand study abroad programs when you look at SUNY as a whole, we all have them universally. So just another way to expand your college experience um, and share with other SUNY uh, 
uh, students uh, in some of those programs. So you can virtually go anywhere in the world that you may choose. In terms of criteria, you know, we are going to look at at least four years of English and social studies, at least three years of math, science and foreign language. Um, Cortland is going to be test optional for this upcoming uh, application year. So you do not have to take or submit your test scores. However, we would be looking at a GPA in the B range, somewhere 86 to a 92 percent GPA, 3.0 to 3.4. However, your school may calculate it. Um, also, in terms of ad, uh, admissions, a huge part of my review personally is EOP, Education Opportunity Program for New York State. I'm the coordinator here in our campus. A couple of things to think about. Um, have to be a resident for 12 months or a year prior. Um, there is a financial guideline that every uh, applicant needs to adhere to or, or not go over. I will put that in the link if that's something that uh, students want to take a look at and just verify that their household doesn't go over that amount. You also have to not be admissible to the college uh, for that particular year. Um, in addition, um, Cortland has um, seats and applications. So well, we have about 40 seats, but we do get about 2,800 applications every year. So applying early and being proactive in, in terms of uh, your application uh, would be also important. In terms of cost, we're about 21,008. That is with all of our tuition costs, room and board and fees. We do give scholarships, you know, ranging anywhere from two to five thousand dollars academically, and then upwards to five thousand dollars for scholarships that you can apply for. And those come in a number of different ways. You know, we have some for first generation students. We have some for descendant of immigrants. We also have them for the major that you may be going into. So a plethora of opportunities to be able to get funded. Next steps, as you can see, just applying early action or regular decision. Here are your dates and deadlines. If you are going to be receiving a scholarship or applying for one your March 15th deadline, and then a deposit deadline of May 1st. And if you have questions, feel free to throw those in the chat, um, and I'll be willing to speak with you there. Thank you very much, and I will reiterate, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our presenters today. For a specific presenter or school, make sure you name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Ithaca College. Thanks so much, Russ. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Kowaleski Dietrich, and I am the Associate Director for Regional Recruitment at Ithaca College. I'm actually joined by my colleague, Hannah Teitelbaum, who is monitoring the Q&A, who's also a Class of 2019 alumna. And so I encourage you guys to continue to ask questions uh, as we're going through some information. Thanks for being with us. So Ithaca is about uh, four hours from the New York City area. We're considered a medium-sized college. We have about 6,000 undergraduate students enrolled. However, the average class size is only about 17. So people say all the time, this is the perfect in-between medium-sized school. You have a foot in either camp. You'll have resources that larger institutions have, but you'll also have a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty and small classes where you're really on a first name basis with your professors. Our students come from literally throughout the globe. So we are what I would consider to be a more residential type of campus and community. The vast majority of our students live on campus over 70%. And typically you will be required to live on campus your first three years, although you're guaranteed housing for all four years. Ithaca offers about 100 different academic programs or majors and 70 different minors across our five schools, those being business, communications, health sciences, humanities and sciences, and last but certainly not least, our founding school, which is the School of Music. So Ithaca was actually originally founded as a music conservatory. We are now based within the liberal arts. All of our students, regardless of degree program, will pursue a liberal arts uh, uh, core curriculum, excuse me, uh, in conjunction with the major that they end up selecting. Where we do have the majority of our students start though is in something called our exploratory program, which is a very proactive type of approach to being undecided, where students are really exploring their options under a lot of guidance and mentorship. And given that we were founded as a music conservatory, we know that students learn best through active practice. And so we very much encourage them to incorporate hands-on learning into their experience with us. So students can do this in a variety of forms. They could pursue internship opportunities. They can pursue research, performance opportunities, perhaps. Uh, we also have student-run television and radio stations on campus, a stock trading room within the School of Business, clinics across a few different health science fields. So anticipate you're going to be doing just as much, if not more, outside the classroom than you're doing inside the classroom. 
We do have three satellite locations in New York City, Los Angeles, and London. So often internships are a big part of this, these experiences as well. And we have our students have a placement rate then about 85%, if not higher, which who are finding full-time positions related to their chosen field of study or enrolling full-time in graduate programs post-graduation. We have over 200 student organizations and clubs that students can explore joining. Quite a few that are focused on, I would say, inclusion on our campus. So uh, one of the big features on campus is our Center for Ideas, inclusion, diversity, equity, and social change. We have so many students on Ithaca's campus who are passionate about social justice. And so you are absolutely able to collaborate with them. We also have quite a few first generation uh, student supports on campus too. And so we're able to further support this population when they're coming to our area. And then Ithaca is of course gorges, G-O-R-G-E-S. There are over 150 waterfalls and gorges within a 10 mile radius of the city itself. And we're known for being based in this amazing college town. We share the city of Ithaca with Cornell University. So every fall, approximately 30,000 college students converge on the Ithaca region. Talking very briefly through the admission process, we have three admission deadlines. We embrace a very holistic application review. We have been test optional since 2012, so we do not require test scores both for admission purposes, but also for scholarship qualification. And we screen every applicant from New York State for eligibility into our Higher Education Opportunity Program, HEOP. I do wanna take you guys on a very quick tour, one minute to be exact. So let's take a look at Ithaca College. Hey, welcome to Ithaca College. We only have a minute to take a tour. Let's go. you can show in a in one minute tour. And so I really do invite you guys to take a deeper dive. Ithaca is offering a full array of different virtual visit opportunities, including virtual photo tours, student panels, information sessions. We're doing a, a conversation with our director of admission series every Thursday. So check out our virtual visit website for more information. And of course, you're always welcome to be in touch with me directly. I'm actually based in the New York City area, kind of crummy rainy day here right now. And I've visited many of the urban assembly schools over the past 10 years that I've been at IC. But at this point, I'm gonna throw it back to Russ. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you very much and appreciate that. And I just wanna remind everyone yet again, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our representatives for a specific uh, college, make sure to name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Brooklyn College. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Mikaria Gapita. I'm one of the um, mission recruiter at Brooklyn College. I would like to share my screen. So as we begin, um, again, my name is McCary Agapita. I'm one of the admission counselor at Brooklyn College. Here you see my contact information. Feel free to email me any questions, or again, you can share it in the chat box. So Brooklyn College is located in Brooklyn, New York. The campus comprises of 13 buildings on a 35 acres tree-lined campus. It was ranked one of the 15 most beautiful college campuses by bestcolleges.com in 2018. 
My favorite area on campus is the lily pond. It's so serene. Um, it takes me away from all the busy noise that uh, noises that I hear on camp. Uh, you know, as students are moving to different classes. Um, during my lunch break, I just relax in this area here, just to take me away from everything. Okay, so Brooklyn College Pass Facts and recent accolades. Um, again, as I mentioned, the campus comprises of 13 buildings on 35 acre Sri Lanka campus. The Brooklyn College Library is the most technologically advanced in CUNY system. For the third straight year, Brooklyn College finished as the most technically diverse college campus in the North region, and I'm very proud of that. Also earning the highest diversity index among all four regional rankings. And it's more to share in terms of our accolades. So you may be wondering, how do I go from being an interested student to becoming an accepted student? What honors opportunities are available? What are the admission requirements? How am I going to pay for classes? What about AP or College Now courses or credits? But before we get to that, there is one truly important question to ask yourself. Why Brooklyn College? Well, Brooklyn College offers more than 80 undergraduate majors and comprise of five schools of studies listed here. Murray Coleman School of Business, School of Education, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, School of Natural and Behavioral Sciences, School of um, Visual, Media and Performing Arts. The model program in, under the School of Business is Accounting, Business Management, Economics, Finance, Nonprofit Physical Management, we also have certificate programs that students can participate in. In our pre-professional program, the pre-health profession, pre-law profession, students who are interested in the performing arts, we have the Bachelor of Fine Arts. Uh, one of our programs that's unique in CUNY system is our Bachelors of Fine Arts in Acting. So we have music, art, theater, creative writing. Our BFA Acting program um, requires uh, audition. Um, some of our fine arts programs require portfolios. There is a two-fold um, process, admission process for our BFA program. Students have to meet the um, admission requirement as well as the audition requirement. The other programs available at Brooklyn College, the Macaulay Honors College, the Scholars Program, the BAMD Program, Coordinated Engineering um, Program, SEEK, and they require separate application requir um, required. Our Percy Ellis Sutton Seek program um, is a twofold admission process. Um, students have to meet the academic requirement as well as the economic, economic requirements. Uh, one of our honors program on our campus we are one of uh, eight senior colleges that participate in the Macaulay Honors Program, is that we look at students' official high school transcript, two letters of recommendation, a character reference letter, two essays, which on the application you will see the writing prompt. And of course, these are the deadlines for letters of recommendation, December 22nd. The character reference letter is this, um, January 15th. Okay, so let's talk about our campus life. So we have intercollegiate or entrepreneurial um, mural, sorry, sports teams. We are division three, student government, so this can participate in. Uh, we have Greek organizations. Uh, we have 150 academic special interests and social clubs that students can participate in. We have indoor gym. Uh, we have indoor basketball courts and swimming pool. Uh, we also have a newspaper and student run radio station on our campus. So you will hear as you walk in on, uh, throughout the campus, you'll hear music and updated news. 24-7 um, library cafe. So we have coffee while we're studying and doing and writing our papers. We have resources and support services on our campus for our students. We have the learning center the Career Development Internship Center that prepares students with their internship um, um, applications, also um, building their interview skills. Um, we have the Black and Latino Male Initiative, the LGBTQ Resource Center, International Student and Scholar Services, Immigrant Student Success Office. So we have a list of different types of services that students can seek on our campus. 
to help them. I'm running out of time. Yeah, if you uh, want to go to uh, your Quickly. contact info or something. And with. Yes, absolutely. So if you have any additional questions or cl need clarity, you can contact me at mccary.agapito at brooklyn.cuny.edu. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I'll remind everyone to use the Q&A if you have any questions for any of our presenters. And if it is for a specific school, make sure you name the school in your question so that uh, they know it's for them. And we'll leave that contact info up for another uh, couple seconds here. And now we'll turn it over to our next presenter from Damon College. Hi guys, my name is Giovanni Jimenez. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Damon. Um, for you guys who will be applying to Damon, you guys will be working closely with me. Um, I'm gonna try to get this information to you guys as quick as possible with only six minutes. So I'm sharing my screen. Um, so this is a quick overview. So we are a small campus. We have about 1700 undergraduate students. Um, 900 graduates, graduate students. With that being said, the student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. Average class size is about 15 students. With all this being said as well, it's very helpful when you're in that class. The professors are gonna know your name. They're the ones who are gonna help you guys end up with a job in the end, with internship experience and everything. So, oops. So how to apply. So we are in the common application. You can also use the Damon application. If you guys see right in the middle, those are our deadlines. Early decision is literally right around the corner. So if you guys don't go early decision, that's totally okay. However, priority deadline is on November 20th. That's big for our nursing students and our PT students and our PA students. But if you wanted to apply by April, I would totally still read your application. <laughs> And what it takes to apply, it's a personal essay, a high school transcript, one letter of recommendation, and we are completely test optional. Um, we are test optionals for all of our majors. So nursing, PT, NPA, business, psychology, any of the majors we have here are all test optional. I do not need an SAT or ACT. So to talk about some scholarships. So every student will receive a merit-based scholarship. They range from 7,000 to 12,500. We also have HEOP here on our campus as well. HEOP is not a financial aid program, it is an academic support program. So to be a part of the HEOP program, you would not have met the right criteria um, academically to be um, accepted into the program. However, we don't wanna pass on you. We still wanna give you a shot. So then we would consider you for HEOP. And when you go into the HEOP process, you would get a lot more information in the mail. We'd have to see your, fa your family's income to see if you're financially eligible for the HEOP program as well. So financial aid, tuition is around 30,000, room and board is about 13,000, so a total cost of 43,000. Don't let that number scare you. It will go down significantly, especially if you guys are going into the HEOP process. And again, with the merit process as well, that'll bring your total cost down significantly. So housing. So Canavan Hall is where our freshmen live. It's all suite style. In one room, there's two people. In the other room, there's three people. The five of you would be sharing one bathroom. You guys would all be on the 19 meal plan, which means you get 19 meal swipes a week. And then each week, you'll get 19 more. After your freshman year, you guys can move to the apartments where you do get a bedroom to yourself. You would share an apartment with three other people. Each of you, again, gets the bedroom to themselves. Two of you share one bathroom. The other two share a different bathroom. The four of you share the common space and a kitchen space. Your meal plan can, though, decrease from the 19 to the 14 or the 10. All laundry is co um, coin-free, and there's a laundry room on each floor within Canavan Hall and the apartments. So for those of you who are interested in Division II athletics, we are a Division II college. So if I recommend if you guys are interested in sports, you know, reach out to me or whatever college you're interested, honestly, and let them know that you're interested in sports because we also want to know just because I'm not the coach doesn't mean I don't want to know. Um, and I can help you be in contact with the coach as well. Um, and because we're a division two sport, there's a couple um, process you have to go through. So I can help you through that process if you guys reach out to me. 
Um, these are just some on the program. So right here is a slide on all the programs we have to offer. So Shadi got a few of the big programs I have here. We have animation, we have um, business, we have natural science, we have nursing, we have psychology, we have physical therapy, we have athletic training, and we also have health promotions. I'm at this point naming all of them. So we do have a lot of majors and a lot of the most pop are very popular, but the big ones I would say are PT nursing and PA and social work. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the end slide with my contact information. I do recommend you guys stay in contact with me if you guys are interested in applying to Damon. Um, I do like to hear from you guys. I would totally love to help you guys with the application process. Um, if we're going HEOP, I would love to help you with the HEOP process. You guys see I have an email there, a phone number, and a text line. In this day and age, I'm totally okay with you guys texting. <laughs> Um, it'll be a very quick response and we literally can talk about anything from your college essay to submitting your application to if you guys want to get more information on the campus or if you guys want to see the campus because you guys are all the way in New York City can't make it out here because we are open for tours so if you did want to make the trip to Buffalo you could come on campus and tour it but if you aren't able to I'd be happy to do a virtual tour with you as well and that's everything I have for you guys. Thank you very much. And I'm going to invite all of our reps to come back on camera and uh, microphone right now. Um, because I'm going to do a quick Q&A just to allow for reps to answer questions that are in the Q&A box that are already there. This will give you a little bit of time as we have about two and a half minutes left in the presentation. So it's going to be a very quick question. We'll go in the order of the presentations. Um, so the what I'll ask is about your favorite campus and or school tradition, and whether it's something you've experienced directly or something you've heard students talk about, what your favorite tradition is for your school. We'll start with St. Francis College. I don't think St. Francis has come back on, so we'll uh, we'll skip ahead to DCAS. I guess speaking from a uh, employment stance, so as best uh, I'm not gonna talk about school, but I've been to school, but for for work, I guess is just networking. Try to get to know as many people as you can and network, because you never know how that can build upon any career aspirations or any kind of career path. Excellent, uh, SUNY Cortland. And the question was the biggest tradition? Yeah, your favorite campus or school tradition. Um, well, I have to throw it to Jessica on this one and say it's the Cortica Jug. Um, you know, it's a huge rivalry between us and Ithaca College. It's a football contest. Um, they call it the biggest uh, little game in the nation. <laughs> um, and last year, we actually both competed at uh, MetLife Stadium, which is where the Jets and the Giants play. So um, I've been here since 2008, and I've been to every game, and almost every game. And uh, it, it's a truly unique and, and uh, gratifying experience. I love it. Excellent. Let's hear from Ithaca College after that. <laughs> yeah, and we're on a bit of a winning streak. So <laughs> um, I would have to say that my favorite tradition is what's called Senior Swim. So you may have saw in some of my visuals, uh, there's a fountain on campus that is the focal point uh, on campus there. And so there is a myth that if you were to step foot in that fountain, you will not graduate from Ithaca College. Something will happen to prevent you from graduating. And the students take this very seriously. So the seniors, the week prior to their commencement, when they finished out all of their academic requirements, finals are complete as a whole class together, go into the fountain. So if you're curious of what this, this looks like, it's a lot of fun. Happens in May when the weather is better in upstate New York, um, but you can YouTube uh, Ithaca College Senior Swim to, to see it in action. Excellent. And let's hear from Brooklyn College. So my favorite um, thing is to hang around the lily pond. Um, also during the admission process, helping students all from all walks of life and meeting different, uh, learning different culture, um, going through um, from the beginning of the process to the end, meaning uh, once they're admitted, what other services I can um, help students obtain. Excellent. And uh, Damon College. 
So one thing we have here at Damon is TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday. So every Friday in our Wildcat Den, which is a nice little area to go get some food, do some homework. It's just a nice social area. Every Friday, one of the clubs here on campus um, hosts it. So they kind of work with our student activities to do what they want. So there's been tie-dye events. There's just been like free food. It's all free stuff. So everyone likes free. So everyone's going <laughs> to get some food or get a new t-shirt to represent the college and just have fun and get to learn about that club and make more friends and intermingle and network with a lot of different people. Something that will always be true. Everyone loves free. So I think that's a good one. And we'll circle back and get to St. Francis College. Yeah, th thank you. Sorry about before. I'm working off of two screens and I couldn't get one screen to unmute and bring myself back, but I was trying to scream I'm here through the, the camp. But regardless, the tradition we have at St. Francis College is classes start in September on a Wednesday for us. So that Tuesday before we call it Terrier Tuesday, the Terrier's our mascot and we have a block party at SFC just to commemorate everything going on. And it's, it's something that I look forward to every year, even as a, an alumni. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you for all sh sharing your favorite campus and school traditions, and also just for presenting today as part of this session. And I want to thank everyone for joining us as attendees. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted today. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings once again at the same place you registered for this session. Thank you again to our presenters from each of our six schools and thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.